Hey everybody, welcome back to Touchy Reactions. Fans of Wrexham AFC, we're back with another episode of Welcome to Wrexham. This is season two, episode six. Got my yeah. awesome sister, Danielle, here with me, and uh, not going to waste any time. We're going to go ahead and jump right in. This is a long episode, so we'll try to reduce the pausing, uh, but knowing us, it'll probably just be around the same amount. Can you full screen it? Yeah, I will. As soon as I play. Oh, okay. So we're going to go ahead and jump into this episode. Here we go. <laughs> I work in the largest prison in the UK. It's a male prison, category C. It can hold a maximum of 2,100 prisoners. I'm actually a manager there now. I've been there five and a half years. It's a bit apartmental, which was um, where you introduce like the new. It's interesting. The biggest city in the U biggest prison in the UK is in Wrexham. It's probably in Wales. Maybe I don't know. No, it said blah 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 prison Wrexham. Huh. Surprised. It's the first time we've heard of it. I'm trying to remember what the last episode was about. I was too. Uh, the first it, one was the shenanigans, and then the second one was a uh, oh them going back and forth with those three teams. Oh, it was all about what it's like to be in second place. We talked about Susan yeah. Lucci and all that kind of stuff. Okay. That's right. All right, back to this one. This one's called Ballers. Here we go. Starters to the prison, so I've done loads of tours. So I'll just give you one of them type of tours. So we've got a custodial calf where you can, staff can go and get some food. A reception area, which the prisoners come off these GOAME buses, uh, head through reception. Kitchens here on the left. Food for over 1,800 prisoners. You just kind of have to make yourself aware. Like, you have to have trust in your staff, but also back yourself, never put yourself in an unsafe position. Of course, we're taught, you know, how to look after ourselves, how to protect ourselves. Use all the tools that you have, a baton, handcuffs, radio, alerts, staff, whenever you need them. I found myself being in this line of work because I'm not the type of person that can sit still or sit in an office. It's so hands-on. You're kind of free to be yourself. That's why I flex. <laughs> and it's a people's business at the end of the day. You know, you're working with people. We're, we're there as parents, as teachers, as healthcare, firefighters. It's an emergency service job. Why are you not out on your own, though? You've got to wait until half time. Oh, I'll have you. I feel proud every day to put the uniform on, to clip the belt on. The job that I do is difficult. It's emotionally straining. It's hard work, but it's also rewarding. I've had family members that have been in prison. I grew up, grew up going to visit prisons. I'm always curious to see how prisons are different overseas than what we're used to seeing here in the States. This one here it seems like it's a uh, more of a rehabilitation place than what we're used to seeing as far as our places go. I've seen a lot of uh, artwork. Uh, it's clean. It seems like a. I it doesn't mean, seem like an American prison. No, no, it doesn't seem like hell on earth, which is what a lot of the American prisons are put out to be. Now, this could just be them uh, giving us the whitewashed version of this. Uh, I don't well, know. I wonder. I mean, we're the murder capital of the world, the United States. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how much violent crimes are happening in Britain. Well, I mean, we saw the hooligan stuff that they go through, but it's nothing like what we deal with here. And the gangs are everywhere, right? I mean, and also, I mean, there's so many more people in America than there are in other countries, so. I just think uh, our prison system could learn a lot from uh, some other parts of the world. Especially that healthcare thing we were watching last night. Yeah. I've seen my sister in prison, my brother, you know, so it wasn't new to me. Um, and I know they're just humans at the end of the day. So it's easy for me to... Yeah, be there. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Wrexham. 
and wow, what an occasion we've got here. Wrexham playing at the race course. The atmosphere here is fantastic. The crowds are wonderful. Doesn't matter how you win a game of football, okay? It's in here and up here. Most importantly, go and enjoy it. One thing that a lot of people don't know and realize is the number one goal scorer for Wrexham is not Paul Mullen, it's not Ollie Palmer, it's not Elliot Lee, it's not Sam Dalby. It's Rosie Hughes. It's four pounds in the box, helps him feed. Clears it now, White puts it in. Oh! Once again, that first, Jesse does, he dumps it past the player. Hughes now, up against the last defender, and White comes into the box, one on one. So far, the big I was wondering how it was going to tie in. I just thought she was a fan that they were introducing. I thought it that's to what it was going to be too, but clearly it's not. <laughs> clever editing, clever editing. They've got the TikTok sponsorship still on there. Deal there. Oh yeah. Uh, wow, she's the leading scorer at Rexham. Huh? Good for her. Rexham <laughs> take the lead. It has to be Rosie Hughes. It has to be. That probably helps her standing at the prison with regards to having respect. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. She's the leading goal scorer on the local football club. I I'm, that's they did a good job. I didn't see that coming. No, I didn't see that coming either. Well done, editor. Don't forget where you came from. Don't forget why you made of ones who they... I've been listening to this song away from this reaction. Like uh, when I'm in the kitchen making something to eat, I'll put it on my phone. I know. I've heard it a couple times. And uh, this one and the uh, the other one with the uh, bring on the Deadpool and Rob McElhaney. I've been. Yeah. When I'm jonesing for wreck some content and I have to wait a week for it to come out, <laughs> I, I listen to the music. <laughs> Don't forget to sing when you win. Don't forget to sing when you win. Did you karaoke it? I looked it up. I, I couldn't <laughs> find it. The men's team is currently in second place midway through the season. But Wrexham has another team that is in first place and is for lack of a better expression, kicking the living shit out of everyone. So I wonder, do the ladies play on a different day of the week, or do they play earlier in the day on the same day that the men play? And is there a women's Premier League? Yeah, do they have a chance to be promoted? You guys let us know in the comments. We don't know anything about the women's league. Uh, I'd like to know a little bit more about it. I would assume. I can honestly say that the whole time I lived in England, I never heard of women's soccer. Well, it might be something new since we were there. We lived there a long time ago. It's not just the men at Wrexham Football Club. There is a women's section. It's very similar on the women's side to the men's side. We're in a really good, strong position to be challenging for promotion. It's a moment when I put okay, up on there we go. Let's go. I guess that answers that question. Yeah. Now, how far they can be promoted. There, is there a professional women's league in England? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I Maybe it's new, but it how, could be. How high does it go? I had to Google that. All right, we're going to Google that. We'll be right back. Well, launching in 2011, the Women's Soccer League proved successful enough to expand to two divisions. 20 teams set up in 2014. It was in 2018. The Women's Soccer League became the fully professional with all 11 top flight teams strictly full time. Nice. Well, cool. There we go. So now we know. All right. Now we're going to meet Miss Amber Lightfoot. Good name for a footballer. We are the women's first team. I'm beating in the league so far. 
won every game. Looking for promotion to get up to the highest league in Wales, which is where we want to be. There's so many people are looking at our results and our players because our, our players are special and they deserve every bit of attention that they get. It's a moment when I pull up on the scene, let's go. Hey. I am Wrexham's goal scorer. I'm a nuisance, I'm, I'm a pain. Defenders do not want to defend me. <laughs> I've scored three hat tricks in one game before against Thank my former you. team, which, you know, sorry, but I love every. Nine goals in one game by one player. Is that what she said? Three hat tricks in one game? Yeah. Nine goals. Insane. She said, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a menace to deal with. Every goal. Rosie Hughes, character wise, is, is great to have around. Very uplifting, confident individual. When I'm on the pitch, a fire within me, it just kind of explodes. I look like I'm laughing in the opponent's faces, but I'm not. I'm just, I'm just happy for me. It's the moment when I pull up on the scene. Let's go. You can see on the pitch the quality. Her touch is fabulous, and you know the pitch isn't perfect, but she tames it superbly. She's ludicrous. I do believe that I'm female Paul Mullen. <laughs> Not that I'm going to compare myself to him, because I feel like he's the male Rosie Hughes. <laughs> I know exactly how he feels. And I'm sure he knows how I feel. I've got girls shouting my name on the pitch and, like, coming to watch her. It's like, for me, that's everything. That's all I've ever wanted is people just to come and watch me play football. Granted, it's not in front of a load of viewers, which I would love. That, that's, that's just the thing. The Wrexham women's home games are not at the race course. We're here in Roos, one of the satellite towns just outside Wrexham. We play at Roos Aylward's ground. We have one small stand which actually isn't open to the public. There's no bleachers. It's just people with a metal barrier around the pitch leaning on it and watching it. it must be a couple of hundred here, but this is growth. That's all right, that's okay. It's, it's all about the knock-on effect, really. It's, you know, with the men's team winning yesterday, um, I think a few more are starting to become interested in the women's side as well, which is, which can only benefit, you know, the girls, they want, they want supporters here to, you know, to be here and, uh, and, and encourage them and, and support them, so. They're on the start of, of what is a, a really, really exciting journey for them, I think. That's where to end the half. We didn't know that there was a women's team in, in Wrexham until we took stewardship of the club and recognized that there was a program that was in place and they just like the men need to win the league to get promoted up and out and into the professional ranks the club is a group of different teams from the power chair team to a seven aside team you know to the youth teams and the girls teams so the women's team is as much a part of the club we play on a nice lovely pitch i say lovely use that term quite loosely on certain days it's not the nicest place <laughs> place to be yeah we, we try not to we, we do come i was gonna say we don't complain we do complain um we all do it because we love football and because we love the club that is wrexham and i think you can see that when you come to games we don't just turn up for a laugh we turn up and we take it quite seriously because we know the importance of wearing that badge Two win, Wrexham women sit first in the league, neck and neck with the only other undefeated team, Connors Key Nomads, who aim to spoil Wrexham's chances of promotion. This way. Ladies! I mean, that was absolutely amazing. Wow. Wow. That was my first game, and I've seen you guys win as many times as I've seen the men win. <laughs> we definitely need to work on drainage on that pitch and maybe new washing machines because I don't know how you're gonna, how we're gonna, look at that. <laughs> it's amazing. Well, congratulations, thank you for having me. And um, Ryan and I have been talking quite a bit about how we want to 
prioritized this program. And for so many reasons in the past, it hasn't been. You're all very important to us and we want to continue to support you. And if you keep winning, it makes it a lot easier. So thank you. More goals next time. Next time. I, I came here for a hat trick and I, I don't know. It was, was great. It was fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> Last year, both the men's and women's teams very narrowly missed out on promotion. This year, things are looking a little brighter. Right now, our women's team is an amateur side. None of the players get paid. If the women win the Adran North League, they will then go into a playoff against the winner of the Adran South League, and the winner of that will be promoted to the Adran Premier. If that's the case, then we have grand plans that involve going to a semi-professional status, which means paying the players. I'm just giving you a high five. Congratulations. Yes, thank you. Great. I don't necessarily even just think it's an ethical responsibility to do something like that. I think that there is a massive business to be created there. Wow, this is great. I can't believe you played in this. Yeah, there's so much to do there, which is great. You know, it's daunting too for us. It's like for us to cultivate and grow that business as well is going to be a real privilege and fun, but you know, we've got a long road ahead. For us as players, all we can do is put out really good performances on the pitch and just keep winning. Prove you're worth watching, you're worth following. You know, prove to us you're, you're worth, because that's how we get more attention. That's how, you know, we bring more success, not just to the women's game, but to football as a whole for Wrexham and, and that's all we need to focus on. I'm 17 and I'm in school at 9 till half 3 most days. Tuesdays and Thursdays aren't work, so I work 5 till 11. So, yeah, no time for anything else, really. They go with thick burgers. Yeah, they didn't have hamburgers like they had in pubs when we were in England. <laughs> yeah, those are, those are thick burgers right there. I hope they're cooked in the middle. That's all I think about is I know the outside's cooked. I hope the inside's cooked. That's why I prefer a smash burger. What's that? Smash? I like the smash burgers. Yeah. Up for the Thank you. You can follow her in the hopper. It's actually vile, isn't it? <laughs> I'm a kitchen porter. Probably one of the hardest and most humbling jobs you, you'll ever do. <laughs> That's giving me flashbacks. When I was in high school, I did that at McDonald's, the local McDonald's on a closing shift. So I was there cleaning all the everything they used to cook all day. I just put on some good music and hours of just soapy water and hot water and your hands would get all wrinkly. I was a dishwasher at the NCO club. They had a clipper where you just put everything on a big tray and send it through the clipper. Oh, nice. <laughs> Much easier. The six hours goes quite fast when, when you when you bent over a sink. This is hot. Be careful. How the fuck am I going to get that on? <laughs> we do ask a lot of these players, considering they are amateur players, they're not professional, they're not on contracts in any way, shape or form. So we play football on top of a working day. Chilling. You coming on Sunday or what? No, nah, I'm not. Why? I'm busy. You're busy? Oh, right, fucking hell. It, it is tough trying to balance everything out, but end of the day, it's what's got to be done. Everyone else has got to do it, so I'll do it as well, do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Stop looking at me. Does it feel like it's like a dream? You know, first you're like playing, your dream career in front of loads of people, and then next day you're cleaning pots. I know, it's mad, isn't it? And do you enjoy it? What, working or playing? Playing. Oh, I love it. It's, I live and breathe for it. I, like, I, yeah, I love every second of it, but, you know, it, yeah. So I'm just <laughs> telling her that when she's famous, she needs to come in. When I'm famous, we'll see. Yeah. Do you Yeah, I think you're a good Joking. footballer. I've read about you. <laughs> <laughs> Started playing football at around six years old. Obviously, there weren't many girls' teams around at that time, so my dad threw me in with, with the under-six lads team, which was a bit daunting at the time. My dad always used to tell me, get involved, get involved, and eventually I did. I was probably the best player on the team at the time. Um, about at age 13, I got scouted to play for Everton. Spent a couple of seasons there, um, which I absolutely loved, playing against big opposition like Man City, Chelsea. I was then drafted in then with the, with the Welsh squad, 
I played at that level at 15s and 17s, which was an unreal experience playing in, in countries like Sweden, Portugal. And then I returned then back, back playing for, for Wrexham where I'm at now. And I probably would have stayed at Everton a bit longer if I haven't lost my dad. Um, oh. He struggled with, me with mental health and anxiety, depression. Um, people knew he was going through it. I guess we just didn't know how much it, it really was affecting him. We knew it was getting bad, but that was a cycle we dealt with a lot. My dad took his own life, um, 18th of April, I think, 2021. Yeah, that's recent. Terrible. <laughs> I'm glad we didn't watch this yesterday. Yeah. Um... She had a very accomplished youth. Yeah. I mean, sounds like she was definitely on the road to professional women's soccer. Uh, that's terrible about her dad. Yeah. Um, I can't imagine what her and her loved ones went through. Yeah, that's terrible. She's gone through quite a difficult period in her life at such a young age. Now, her dad... Like, like mine is the reason why she comes to watch Rex and why she's uh, the fan that she is. Yeah, he, he's, he was a massive fan of the club as well. So he used to make these stupid videos trying to, trying to catch Robin Ryan's attention all the time. Um, I'm here with um, my daughter, Lily, uh, who's also played for Rexham girls. Her dad was was absolutely what, what an incredible man her dad was, and you know we knew her dad really really well. <laughs> he was a massive character, and everyone seems to know him, and everyone seems to have a story about him, which which is very comforting. I do feel like he's still with us all the time. He, he's at my football games watching the flag we designed after he after he passed. Every time I step on the pitch and every time I step off is would I made my dad proud. What what would my dad think of this and what he'd say and, and what he'd think of my performance, so. Oh. She is Wrexham, just like I feel that I am. And, you know, for her to, to pull on the, a Wrexham kit every week means the, means the world to her. You know, if she's here and she helps us gain promotion, it would be pretty special for her, I would say, and, you know, probably more so than if it was any other club that she might be playing for. Almost since she's gone, I've fell in love with the club even more. I honestly don't know where I'd be if I, if I didn't have that support and the people around the club who were there for me all the time. It's took his love, love on for it, really. It's got to be really hard for her in that it seems like her father was... Football was one of the ways that they bonded on, yeah. and on and off the field. It was like a huge thing. So for her to have it to still be such a huge part of her life. I mean, maybe she loves it too. Yeah, and maybe it helps her remember her dad and that kind of thing. And, and uh, you know. And like she said, that's a big support system, a, a team. Yeah. Is I, this bothering you, this topic? I'm sorry? Is it bothering you? No, no. It's just sad. I just feel for a young girl. And, uh, you know, we only saw one side of her dad here that they chose to share with us. But uh, It sure. sounds like she was talking about bipolar. Yeah, he, you know, we, a lot of times people suffering from depression will put on a brave face when they're in public, but when they're alone, it's a whole other story. So I feel for her. I'm rooting for her. Brexo! <laughs> You know, football has strangely always been seen as a, as a boys' sport, um, even though the women's game was, was much, much, much bigger than the, the men's game. So I think it's important to have some context around women's football because, you know, it, we've seen it of late. There's been this huge increase in interest. England won the Euros. You know, the women's game in the US is, is really big. But for a long time, women's football has been in the wilderness. Right back in its very origins in the 1880s, there were big teams that drew massive crowds across the UK and even internationally. Women's football got a real shot in the arm during the First World War, with all of the men away fighting in the trenches on the Western Front. 
women's football was really kind of the only game in town. And even when the men returned home, the women's game still remained enormously popular. Funny how it mirrors the women's baseball that took place the same way during the oh, war. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, what was that movie? League of Their Own. Yeah. That all, because of the war, that's how that league kind of developed. On December 26, 1920, 53,000 people turned out to watch a women's game. Yeah. That is a crowd we can only dream of at Wrexham these days um, and speaks to the enormous popularity of it. In fact, it was so popular that it was deemed to be a threat to the men's game and the FA took the step in the following year, 1921, to ban all women from playing football, saying the game of football is unsuitable for females and ought not to be encouraged. And they, in fact, banned women's football until the 1970s. I never would have guessed that. That is incredible. It was banned. That's I mean, just men being men. Uh, they don't want that. They have to compete. Ooh, it's been like that forever. Women are oppressed. That's too bad. So women's football was in the 1970s. So women's football was female football committee at the FA was not set up until 1993. And thank goodness it was, because without that, you wouldn't be seeing all the many manifold triumphs of women's football today. <laughs> Of course we want to be a part of that and it's definitely a long road ahead but it's worth it. Rob and Ryan of course are supporting us and Blake she obviously um, sponsors our team as well. When I first started Betty Buzz I set out to create the best tasting sparkling drink out there. It's pretty special that they are supporting us in, in that way. And, you know, that, that makes us as, as, a, as a team and as a section feel, feel very, very much part of the club. I have no idea who Blake Lively is. You? Yeah. She's, She's an singer? actor. Actress? She's an actress, yeah. Uh, oh, Gossip Girl is where she got her... Uh... Notoriety, where she, where she came up? Yeah, and she was in that um, movie, The Sister of the Traveling Pink. Okay. Sisterhood, a part two. Was she in part one? Uh, now I know why I don't know who she is. Those are two things that are not on my radar. <laughs> Let's see. Just do Jumping quick... back in. Good for Blake and uh, supporting the team. Good for her. And do you guys have a sense of Gemma Owens involved in all that? The Gemma is the beating heart of the entire, yeah. the entire club. I'd say Gemma's heart extends into the Wrexham AFC Men's Club, too. <laughs> She's putting her last drop of blood into this this uh, this team and and building it and growing it it's gonna be incredible i'm really really excited about it i oversee the entire women's and girls section at the club so that's all the way from uh our little under eights all the way up to our senior women's team and organizing everything in between basically wow yeah i'm born and bred Wrexham always had a football by my feet um i've never really been a girly girl if i'm honest um yeah i, I grew up with you know going on the football field with the kids that lived locally it might have been me and one other girl and then the rest of them were, were all boys and that's that yeah that was that was me i loved it my husband's gareth owen one of the best midfielders we've had at the club his main sort of time period was the 90s I grew up watching him, yeah, which was quite strange, you know, going back to when you used to stand at the side of the pitch and high-fiving players, yeah, that was, he was one of them, which is a little bit weird, but <laughs> he is now the under-19s manager with our women's side as well. I try and learn as much as I can off him, and yeah, he's he's, he's great. He's, he, he's playing a big part at the moment in the growth of our women's side as well. We will not be putting you up front again. No, Jem, listen! <laughs> Oh my <laughs> Gemma, Owen, head of all female, everything that goes on at Wrexham. No! Next one! Come on, Grace, it's gotta be you! I, th I don't think football for women would be as big as it, as it is in Wrexham if it wasn't for her, so North Wales can basically thank Gemma Owen for that. Oh, 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 oh! I'm trying to give as many girls and women the opportunity to get involved with what I think is the best sport in the world. And being in amongst a club that I have been supporting for my entire life is, it, it's a dream, it is an absolute dream.
I wonder how many nights a week they practice. Is this like every night or is it every other night? Well, if there she's in, if she's involved with every single club, I imagine every single day of the week. Uh, and yeah, I gotta the, imagine how, she doesn't go to all the practices, but she helps organize. But maybe it's one team practice this day, such. one team practice the next day. You know, the pitch is probably in such bad shape because all the different age groups probably play on that same pitch, so it's getting so much attention all the time. I was just thinking to myself that her and her husband must just talk football constantly. Yeah, wake up and it's Wrexham all, all day, day I mean, every day. Yeah, it's their life. Mm-hmm. It's Connor's keen. They make me nervous, and they're awful. They're not nice players either. We're top of the league now, and they're only they're second, but with two points below us. So obviously, if they win, they're going to go back to the top of the league. Um, in the changing rooms, I like, I know like everyone will be nervous, and it gets to you. You can either get let the pressure get to you, or you can perform really well. We used to have these feelings against Llandudno because last season they were probably our main competitors. But this season it's been Connors Key. So it's 90 minutes, isn't it? And we are we can be better than them. We can beat any team if we put our minds to it. Just have to do the easy ball, just play football. Quite a big game for us today. Top of the table clash, and we've still got to play them twice in the league. So, you know, these these two games are going to be vitally important to us. Hopefully, fingers crossed, winning the title. So, I think it'll be a close game. I don't expect anything other than it being a close game. I'm going to predict a tie. I'm going to predict they win by at least three. Okay. Right. We've said everything that we need to say, OK? We don't need to sell it to you anymore, OK? It's a game, OK, that we have to take seriously, OK? We've got to be aggressive with and without the ball today, all right? So let's make sure that we get bodies in and around the box, OK? Be patient with each other as well. Come on, girls. Yeah, big pop in, Natty. Come on. Come on. Here they come now. Well, look ready. On your toes, girls! So we're rooting for the blue team here, not the red team. Right. Yeah, just screen in front, do toes, Ed. Do toes. You can see that we're both very, very good teams. And um, probably deserve to be in the last prem, to be fair. Their coaching staff are very barky, the players are very barky and a few tough decisions made against us. Um, we have to back, back a lot doing that. I think that we managed to do that. Everyone did put their body on the line. The tackles were tackles were being put in. Passes were being made quickly, and you know when one player was going ten percent, we were ten percent less. We were just get, getting that extra ten percent from somewhere else. Hey. Right, you were you were close. Close, yeah. We got a good good little team going, I think. Gives them a five point lead over them now. They got a little breathing room. Listen in. Today, I couldn't give a shit how you win a game of football. It's about fucking digging in and making sure that we win a game of football. We fucking enjoy it right now and we enjoy it tomorrow in the gym. Tuesday, Wednesday, our fucking heads turn now. Sunday, we get it fucking wrapped up. We win the fucking league and get everything we fucking deserve. <laughs> Yeah! Yeah, I'm 
so proud of my team. Just proper happy, excited, buzzing, feeling amazing. Just uh, can't contain my excitement. Really. Girl on girl. Girl on girl reaction going on. <laughs> Hold on, hold on. Are they singing the Paul Mullen yep, song for, for Rosie? Rosie, sing for Rosie Hughes. Yes, thank you on the side. She plays a red and white. She flipping dynamite. We've got Super Rosie Hughes. Flipping. She's That's flipping nice. dynamite. <laughs> It's just it's unbelievable, isn't it? Putting that putting that shirt on and, and playing for that badge is something that every single girl on, on the team knows knows what that weight carries and you know, put, putting two then three is it's just an unbelievable feeling and can't wait to do it again next Sunday. People always ask me, how do I celebrate a Wrexham win? And I tell them, with smooth, delicious aviation American gin. People always ask me, how do I tolerate a Wrexham loss? <laughs> and I tell them, smooth, delicious aviation American gin. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a fun season. Yeah. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 1864 suite. I've got to introduce uh, our former player guests for tonight, making his football league debut for Wrexham in September 1997. He also won two Welsh Premier Cup medals and also played for Wales Fall International. He was a Wrexham lad, Neil Roberts, everybody. <laughs> the time at Wrexham, Neil, what was the highlight for you? You know, I'm, I'm standing here now and I'm still in awe of Mickey sat at the table there because he was one of my heroes growing up. More importantly than anything is having my daughter one of my daughters here tonight who represents the women's football team for Wrexham and uh, I don't remember football ever being something that wasn't part of my life as soon as I could walk I think I was kicking a ball as the cliche goes we had Mia when I was uh, I was 24 came as really no surprise for her to go down the footballing route first time to have a look through it together. It's basically something my um, nana put together to, yeah. for me and my brother and sister to have to, you know, look back on to see your little little career. Um, <laughs> it captures basically the last few seasons of your career, really. Yeah, the last couple of seasons. Local hero, Roberts keeps dragons in hunt. That season started on a, on a massive high for me as I was captain of my hometown club. Um, there was a there was a very good squad in place, and then unfortunately it, it kind of took a turn for the worse. So a couple of players moved on to to what was better opportunities for them, and we became a very young squad. This is the painful bit. End of an era. Yeah, that's me in tears. <laughs> See, like, to read that, it just, no. it's not, it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. Um... I'll talk about this in a second. Wrexham are out of the Football League. They've lost by two goals to nil. The oh, senior that's when they got relegated. Gary... Yeah, I was going to say, it's one thing to lose and not win the season, <coughs> but to be the one of the teams that gets relegated is, like, even double, you know. Yeah. At least if you were came in third or fourth and didn't win the season, but you didn't get relegated. It's just super painful when you get relegated. Hooper did the first half. Theo Robinson, his first goal in 16. It did feel like a nightmare. And for me personally, it, it was really tough because I was captain of the team that, that got relegated. So, yeah, that was a that was a tough pill to swallow for me, really, and, and still is to this day. My personal take on it is that it's... Um, it, it did take a big piece of me and I think it caught up with me in uh, in later life and I became a little bit distant and, you know, maybe, maybe it's to a point uh, a different person as well. It's had a massive effect on my, on my life, especially from a family point of view. It was hard for us to go out as a family without 
being subject to certain things being said because you know obviously the club does mean that much to people and that obviously shouldn't happen but you can see why it does happen because they're going to put fault on someone the captain you know he's he's well up there and you know people to to blame i didn't know it was after 87 years mm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You say all the right things to <laughs> make me feel better. <laughs> this season for me is, it's more than football. It might allow me a, a new, a new start in many ways and a new, a new chapter in, in my life and, and my family's life. You know, that's the one thing that Rob and Ryan have given everybody in the town is, is belief, is belief and a, a kind of dare to dream sort of thing. Basically just a summary and the plan from, for me to finish this when Wrexham got back in the league. Touch wood, hopefully, hopefully we get to finish it in a few months. Women's there, men's there. Let's hope, uh, let's hope we do it. Yeah. But we'll do that together. Yeah. Why? Right, mate. How are we? Okay. <laughs> Hiya, you okay? As the Wrexham men continue to battle for promotion, the women's team is nearing their finish line with a critical match this weekend away to Rill. Win this one, and they'll have won the league and set themselves up for a significant promotion up the football pyramid. The women's team are coming off the back of their big win against Connors Key, and they're looking really confident, as well they should if they win this game. They clinch the league. The fact that we could... I'm so nervous. <laughs> uh, right, I, I have this like... feeling of dread. I, I know like, they oh, just God. beat their main rival, but let's not, let's not, let's not lose it here. When the league is massive, that's what all the girls want. We, we want to take this to the next level and, and we want to make the town and, and the owners proud, really. So we will do whatever it takes to win that game. Well, you, you've got to give real credit because they held Connors Key, they held Flandidno and only just lost out 2-1 there. So they're not going to roll over, it's not going to be easy, we know that, we're going away from home. And again, like we've uh, spoke about, that target on our back, you know, they'll want to spoil the party really, they're not going to, they're not going to enjoy us, you know, beating them and celebrating winning the league at their place. Mm. I'll try not to look as ill as I did last week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was some pressure last week. The girls did really well, though, because they knew what was at stake last week yeah. and just how resilient they were. They were brilliant. Mm -hmm. They were brilliant. Uh, Got to get the job done first, That's though. Definitely. Excited for it. Let's, let's do it. Let's smash it. Let's beat them. Because we can. We have done. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll do it. And hopefully the pressure of a cup game won't get to us because it's the league and obviously we've um, won every game so far in the league, so hopefully we'll just continue our um, winning streak. We know exactly what we've got to do, OK? We cannot make sure that we obviously take this game lightly. These won't want, obviously, us to come here and turn them over. Simple as that. Last week was a slog. This week, let the football do the talking. Get the ball down, use the pitch. How good does that feel coming in when you've got 50-odd people giving you a clap? Yeah? All right? That's the ambition, yeah? That's the drive, OK? Let's send them home fucking happy and let's send them home that we fucking played well today and we've done our fucking jobs, okay? No regrets at the end of this game. Come on, let's go. Come on, Come on then, girls! Come on, Claire! On the side, Lily! Their confidence was warranted. They came flying out of the traps and scored three early goals. Wow! All right. So I'm delighted to say, look who's next to me here, Mr. Uh, Humphrey Carr is at the game today. <laughs> Fantastic. What do you think so far? It's going well, 3-0 three, three up. We just, just missed a penalty, but I'm, I'm hoping that won't come back to haunt us in the second half. But yeah, it's going well. Obviously, three points here means, means the title, so yeah, um, yeah, it's a great day. Get there, Kim! That's a hat trick for number 11. She uh, scored two in the before they interviewed him, so that's her third goal.
Yes, when people talk about the beautiful game, they often uh, summon the spirit of 1970s Brazil, but I think those people maybe haven't seen 2023 Rex and Women. Damn. That's, that's two for her. Rosie Hughes is unbelievable. Like, I've been lucky enough to see her a couple of times in action now, and, you know, she's a Rex and legend. Yeah, I'm, I'm really chuffed for her, I'm really chuffed for all the girls, and it'd be great to have a double celebration at the end of the season. I'm Freak Diocaval, thank you very much. Cheers, Tommy, take care. They're working hard, working as a unit, and, frankly, putting real to the sword. a uh, hat trick for her. Damn. So uh, two hat tricks. Wow. Damn. That's how you win a league right there. Yeah. Dominating fashion. Good good That's crazy. Outstanding job, ladies. Congratulations. So the full-time score is Real 1, Wrexham 11, which is an unbelievable way to win the Adran North League. Damn. Did you ever, if you ladies happen to watch this, did you ever think that a couple people in Knoxville, Tennessee would be sitting here rooting for you all the way across the ocean? Uh, we are now Wrexham. Rosie fans. Teams. Yes. <laughs> However... Unfortunately, despite having won the title of the Andran Northern League, and that's a fantastic achievement in and of itself, it doesn't yet mean promotion. There remains the playoff game against the winners of the Andran South, and that is Britain Ferry. <laughs> so, please tell me I didn't celebrate that too early, and please tell me they wrap that up in this episode because if we got to wait longer to find out, I'm going to be just a nervous wreck. Here we go. We've still got one more game. Oh, amazing. I mean, it feels like all the hard, hard work's paid off. We should have done it last season and had to do it in an 11 1 win today and get a goal for myself. It is a dream come true, to be honest. And to do it for this band as well is, yeah, it means everything to me, you know. Playing for this club and, and doing it for this people is, is something I've always dreamed of doing. And the fact that I've done it is something I'll, I'll always be proud of. We won the league, however, that didn't guarantee automatic promotion, but we'd still won a league, and I thought that that was really important that we celebrated that for the girls to have their celebration, because if we didn't go up, it was it's still an incredible achievement. There's a little message for you here from one of our chairmen. <laughs> Hey there, this is just a quick message for the Rex and AFC women. I, um, boy, I just want to say congratulations on, on, um, on one of the most <laughs> incredible and historic seasons uh, so far um, we've ever had. Um, you know, and by we, I mean this club and you. Uh, you guys have been putting up what I guess could only be described as basketball scores. <laughs> it's been incredible. Um, and I just want to say congratulations. And thank you uh, for putting your heart, soul, and last drop of blood into every single one of these matches. Um, each and every one of you are heroes, and uh, I'm sending you tons of love from uh, from New York. Send us a check. What's that? Send us tons of checks. Yeah, send us some money. <laughs> Have a little thank you bonus. Give us a new pitch to play on, please. Mm -hmm. Working in football is incredibly difficult. It's it's a lot of time, there's a lot of hours that go into it. But it's all worth it when you can help play some part, however small, into growing the club that you have idolised for your entire life. It means the absolute world, it really does. <laughs> Is that Coldplay? Coldplay? 
Is that what that is? I have no idea. I've never heard that song. It didn't sound like Coldplay. Oh, okay. His voice was a little low for Coldplay. <laughs> okay, I guess we do have to wait until next week to find out how they do. All right. Well, uh, I guess that is the end of this episode, and we are going to have to wait to find out. And man, I hope I hope they don't lose the next game. <laughs> This is a uh, this is the season. This is the storybook season when both the men and the women are going to get brought up to the next league, promoted, and it's going to be the town is going to be euphoric. It's I hope gonna, so. I'd hate to see all this hard work from these young ladies come down to one game that they, uh, for whatever reason, didn't they say they went undefeated? Yeah, yeah, that's incredible. So uh, uh, I hope we find out soon. I'm going to be yeah. on bated breath. So this was a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. Daniel, thank you for joining me. Thank you. If you guys did enjoy this, hit that like button down below. It doesn't cost you anything. It makes us feel good when people like our videos. Uh, if you're not subscribed yet, there's a big red subscribe button down below. Click on that. It'll turn gray, let you know you have subscribed. And if you hit that bell off to the side, it'll let you know anytime we drop some new content over here on the channel. These Wrexhams are coming out every Wednesday over here. So uh, we'll be cranking them out until the end of the season. Now we got two clubs to root for, the women and the men, and that's pretty cool. So uh, yeah. I, I uh, now I got to figure out which jersey I got to buy. Do I got to <laughs> buy the men's jersey or the women's jersey? I don't know. We'll see. Oh, we got a Patreon. There's a link up in the corner and down below in the description. Shout out to all our patrons. And shout out real quick to everybody who's been talking to us in the comments. I love talking to all the Wrexham fans. Me too. Especially the ones that live in that area and, uh, you know, are just looking for any Wrexham content whatsoever out here on YouTube. So... We are happy to do this. It's something I look forward to every week, and uh, it's going to be a fun season. Please don't give us any spoilers. We're trying to enjoy the ride, so uh, you know, keep it clean in the comment section. And with that being said, we appreciate you stopping by, and don't come forget to back. come on back. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, the YouTube algorithm is pretty sure you're going to like this video too. So come on over and click on that and enjoy.